Hi, welcome to the next training of asset accounting part and in today's training part we will be doing the period and year and activities in asset accounting where the period and activities comprises opening and closing of FI period assets complete all the asset transactions then the next is the period asset posting next is depreciation run so these are the major period and activities which every company should follow and should be completed whereas the year and activities involves account reconciliation year end closing fiscal year change and in case you have closed the period you can undo the year end closing as well so moving on to the period first we'll discuss about the period and activities so the period and activity is one of the regular tasks in the production environment the period and activities are defined in the regular periodical task to be executed at predetermined period intervals in each application component or activity the period and activity is done as a routine process so this particular in period and activity which is also known as the month and activity is done at each of the different modules as a routine process the period and closing can be done by manual or by automatically through the help of schedule manager i would like to give the list a uh, certain list we'll discuss which can be considered as a period and closing activities in a general FICO module part and then we'll move to the asset accounting period and activities so if you talk about the finance module in the finance module there are number of different activities which are taken up as a period and closing activity like uh, one is verification of cash balance another is ensuring that all the daily postings are accounted properly in the books then the next is the payment of due bill of exchange and next verification of vouchers with the general with the generated reports from the scp system then automatic payment program has to be executed by the month end and many other activities like open and close of posting period for the next period uh, so that the uh, the finance accounting entries can be posted in it then any kind of a recurring entries at the year end activities has to be posted then accrued and deferral of postings at the predefined year end activity has to be taken up interest posting for gl and open item has to be done then asset under construction that is auc asset has to be settled number of clearing activities has to be taken uh, has to be done with reference to the vendor clearing customer clearing grir clearing and all number of different such clearing activities we need to even execute the foreign currency valuations so there is a huge list for the fi module itself where these things has to be done so it varies at times from company to company as a priority which will be a part of their end period and activities for the fi part so we'll moving up to the asset accounting part now that the period and activities so the first period and activities in asset accounting part is to open and close fi period related to assets so whenever a particular period is has ended we move on to the next period so to post transactions in the next period the system should be open to accept the entries so to open the next period we need to go to the transaction ob52 which we can execute over here ob52 and in this the variant maintained for the company code 1010 is 0010 over here you can see that there are different account type on your screen and in this you need to change the periods so over here right now the period has been open from 2000 first period till 
12th period of 2014. So once you move into 2015, you need to open the period or you need to extend this year from 14 to 15 so that the system will allow you to take the financial entries in the books of accounts. So this is one of the activities where you need to change these periods over here so that all the asset related entries can be done in the books of accounts in SAP system. So just for a scenario, suppose we are running up in the period of 2014 and suppose I take this year over here as 2014 and we are right now running up in the period from April if you count from April we are running up on the ninth period as of now so we can take it over here as 9 so if I put it over here 9 and over here 12 2014 this means that now I will be able to post transactions from December 2014 till March 2015 only. So A account key refers to asset and I have restricted the asset posting from December to March 2015. That means no one can go back and post the entries prior to the December month. So once I have saved this that means now nobody will be able to post any entries previous to the ninth period. So this is how the period has been maintained and even if I go back onto this side and I maintain over here also as 9 that means I am been able to post asset transactions only in the month of December because I have fixed 9 to 9 as a period for 2014 fiscal year. So 9 means December month over here and the system will get restricted for asset posting till the particular month of December. So this is how you can execute these things in the system. So and if you want to open it to the next, you can even extend it as you wish. So that's what I have did. I have changed the period. So this is what the first period and activity over here has been done. The next is complete all asset transactions. So now this particular part means that there are certain any kind of a incomplete or any transactions any asset related postings which have been pending which have not been completed till date should be completed within that particular period so that that particular asset can be booked for the depreciation from that particular month only so if at any any transactions will be left incompleted in those cases those transactions will not be captured in this and those will not come into the fiscal financial statement of that particular period and even the the depreciation and the de various cost and the asset will not be reflected in the balance sheet items and the income statement part even the asset under construction settlement has to be done so that is again is a part of complete all asset transactions as a whole I have taken up so if any such transaction any such things is pending in the books any invoices has to be punched any asset related entries has to be has to be done that has to be completed with this part there is nothing major in this so moving to the next is the period asset posting So moving up to the period asset post. So the period asset posting is used to post all the asset transactions recorded in the depreciation area 01 to the other depreciation areas as well. So to perform this procedure this is taken as a month and closing procedure for every company where we have to execute this particular transaction ASKB and with that the different asset transactions which have been taken place in the depreciation area 01 will get posted to the next with the other depreciation areas as well. So when you execute this particular transaction you will also have to establish an external document type a document number range and a reverse document type also with the account type 
allowed for the assets in the GL account. So this particular activity is a very rare and is been done in a very limited organizations. The document type needs to be different from the document type used for the standard depreciation posting that is AF or AA. So over here we use AZ and we are also using a number range outside than the standard num document type and the number range of AA. So we'll execute this particular transaction so, so as to have a look of this. So we can execute the transaction AKSB AK sorry ASKB slash n ASKB enter so you can see the screen over here on your on your system so once you move on to it what you need is you need to fill the details you need to select the company code so the company code suppose is 1010 then you need to select the list asset and then list direct items you need to select both of them and then you have to select the test run as well so first we will be executing this particular report period asset postings in test run and after that if everything feels to be good and okay then we will be taking the test run off we'll deselect the test run and we'll execute in the system so now we can execute this report over here so once you execute the system is giving that document type for specific APC posting does not exist so we need a separate document type to be assigned for this so to define now over here we need to assign the document type to the company code so that the periodical APC postings can, can proceed so let's move on to assign the document type we can move to SPRO we need to go to the IMG screen and in that we need to go to the financial accounting new in financial accounting new we need to go to the asset accounting then the integration with general ledger so over here you can see the option post APC value periodically in that we need to go to specify the document type for periodic posting of asset values so we need to execute this option over here you can I think you could you could have understood the path we need to go to the asset accounting first then the integration with general ledger accounting then post APC value periodically to the GL account and in that we need to go to the specify document type for periodic posting of asset values so we can execute this option over here and once you execute this option you can see that in the company code 1010 the document type is not been assigned so over here we need to assign the document type so the document type which we will be taking is we can see it from the search options the list of the different document types so in that you can see that AP is the one which has been defined as the periodic asset post so this is what we will be taking up over here as a standard document type for periodic asset posting as a period and activities so once we have assigned it over here now we can save this document so once we have saved that means now the document type has been assigned so now we can move back to this transaction but we need to execute the transaction once again because whenever an error occurs and you do those certain customization changes then the transaction needs to be executed again so that's what we will be executing the document once again over here so now uh, executing the transaction ASKB enter now we can take the company code over here again we can select the list asset and list direct items then we'll take it in the test run part and we'll execute this so now executing so once you execute the system asks you do you want to continue proceeding anyhow so it will be yes 
So once this has been done, the message comes there are no areas to be posted periodically. So as of now, in this particular company code, there is no such depreciation area where the assets transaction need to be posted periodically. But in certain organizations, there are a number of different depreciation areas where this particular transaction needs to be executed so as to update the different depreciation areas with the transactions of the depreciation area 01. So once this has been done, you can continue on it and your process has been completed. So that is what similarly you need to execute in the in your system accordingly. So this is what the period asset postings has been done. So now moving to the next step is depreciation run. So depreciation run is the one which we have done earlier as well. So we will not be ex we will not in be involved much in it and I would not be executing the whole process of depreciation run as the things have been discussed and you can revisit that part on your previous recordings but just in a small discussion this depreciation run basically is a planned depreciation that is posted to the relevant general ledger control account as a as a periodic depreciation posting run activity so in this part we we execute the report that is AFAB and on the basis of that as a, at the period end the depreciation get automatically posted on the basis of the different depreciation keys assigned in the asset masters so you don't need to execute depreciation manually for one to one assets instead of that you can execute this transaction over here at AFAB and all the asset masters doesn't matter how much Num in numbers they are in whether they may be thousand or five thousand doesn't matter the system will post the depreciation in one go at the back end so this is uh, the another part which we have uh, earlier done so this is what is a part of your period end activities which is done as a routine activity at every month end in every organizations so when the system posts this depreciation, it creates collective documents. It does not create separate documents for each assets in case of depreciation run. So that is it all about. Now moving to the next part is the year end activity which is more interesting and more important to understand in case of asset accounting part. So the first point over here on the year end activity is that one thing has to be clear that year end activity is always a very important activity because there are a number of different customizations and things involved and that is why it is taken with due care in every organization. So the steps we will be doing over here in the year end activity is the first of that is the account reconciliation. So moving on to the account reconciliation part. While we do the bank uh, account reconciliation, the program selects the asset summary records from the table that is ANLC table and summarizes the values on the GL account and the business area level and writes the summarized value to the table. Then this table is read and the values are reconciled with that of the FI GL accounts. The following accounts are reconciled in the system while going for the account reconciliation. The first is balance sheet account of APC. APC means the, the different accounts related to the different asset class. Then the balance sheet account for down payments are reconciled. Balance sheet account revaluation, special items, value adjustment, ordinary depreciation, value adjustment, special depreciation, then unplanned depreciation. So these are some of those accounts which are reconciled when we execute the transaction and you should start the report before year end closing only. So this program reconciles between the asset accounting 
determinations in the asset accounting module with the corresponding GL accounts in the general ledger as per the integration of GL accounts done with the asset classes. So this report must be run before the year end closing. Do not make any asset postings while this particular report is, is running on the system. So let's move on to execute this particular report. So the transaction code for this is A P S T 2. Enter. So over here in the screen you can see that it asks you the company code. So over here you just need to put your company code that is 1010. That's all. And now we can execute the report. So this report should be executed at the back end from the from the option over here execute in background. You should not execute this report in the front. So once you click on to the execute into background now the system will ask you the background print parameters. So you need to select the print parameter as LP01 as a standard device by SAP. Then we can execute and continue. So once you continue to conf after confirming your printer selection, the system asks you to the start time. So do you want to start this immediately or you want it to start at a later date? So to run this job at a later time or after a specific event, in that case you, you can go for selection of date and time or after job. But in case you want to execute the report immediately at that point of time, in that case we need to go to this immediate option over here. So we'll select on the, we'll click on to this immediate option over here. So once you click on to immediate option, we need to go to the save option on the on the downer side. So we need to go to the save over here. So once you click on to the save, now the system will generate a back, background job schedule for the program that is RAABST02. So you can see that over here in your screen, over here, this is your, your program, background program name over here in this capital letter on the last part. So this is one which you need to check now to see this status of this your background job you need to go to the transaction SM37 enter and once you have move on to this screen you need to execute again. So once you execute it take you to the page where your particular program has been executed. So you can see your program over here has been executed as this which has been finished now. So it was started on December, sorry, December 20th and the time starting uh, was 5.11 and the duration took was 5 seconds to complete the job. So once you have taken this, now we can select the option over here and we can go to spool over here now. So once you click on to the spool, it takes you to the next page to you and you can see over here and now you can select this. and click on to this display option over here so that you can display the content of the job. So once you see this there is nothing as of now that means no reconciliation error or no problem was there. So the system displays the status of the reconciliation process and the status which has been shown to us over here is zero that is nothing is there means it's zero. So the first currency difference confirming the correctness of the account balance. So if there would have been any difference then there would have been some some differences been reflected on your screen. But if there is no list have been contained over here that means that uh, the reconciliation is correct and the account balances are correct from the asset accounting and the GL perspective from the general ledger accounting part as well. So this is the account reconciliation part how you would be doing in your particular company. So that is account reconciliation which has been done. Now we'll be moving to the next that is year end closing. So year end closing you can use the year end closing program 
to close the fiscal year of one or more of the company codes from an accounting perspective. Once the fiscal year is closed, you can no longer post or change values within the asset accounting for the period or the for the fiscal year which has been closed. So once you close a fiscal year, you cannot make changes to that particular fiscal year values or you cannot post any of the transactions in that. So the fiscal year that is closed is always the year following the last closed fiscal year. You cannot close the current fiscal year. You can close only a, a, a previous year than the current fiscal year. So the year end closing in the asset accounting can be performed before the year end closing in the general ledger accounting. The fiscal year change has to be carried out in the asset accounting before the year end closing is done. So now we can move on and we can uh, perform an year end closing activity. So we can go to the transaction AJAB. AJAB enter. So over here the prerequisites are to close a particular year that you have to carry out the year end closing as background processing for the performance reasons. The planned depreciation from the depreciation area to be posted has been completed. So once you want to go and close that particular fiscal year you must have to ensure that every activities have been completed with respect to that particular fiscal year like the depreciation run has been executed. The balances from the depreciation that are posted periodically have been completely posted to the general ledger with respect to that particular fiscal year. All assets acquired in that particular fiscal year have already been capitalized. Since this check does not make sense for assets under construction, you can prevent it from being performed for these assets by means of the asset class. You have to ensure that all incomplete assets masters have been completed for the previous fiscal year which we will be closing now. The system lists any assets that do not meet the above requirement in the year end closing in the log. So you can check the log which will show you all the reasons for error so that the system will not allow you to close the period. So for closing the period all your incomplete transactions with respect to the assets should be completed. Your depreciation run should be done for that particular fiscal year. Only then you can execute the year end closing of the fiscal year in the asset accounting part. So now moving up to do this particular activity we need to select the company code and then you need to select the fiscal year which you want to close. Suppose I want to close my last fiscal year that is 2013 and then first you need to execute this over here in the test run part. So once you execute in the test run part it will show you that is there any error or not and if the system will allow you to close the period without a test run or not. So moving up to execute this part over here. So once you execute the system asks you do you want to continue processing anyway? Yes. So now you can see over here the system says there is no year end closing is necessary for the company code 1010. Why? Because no transactions have taken place on that particular company. So the next we are will be doing is fiscal year change. So fiscal year change from a system perspective a fiscal year change represents creation of a new fiscal year for a company code. At the fiscal year change the asset values from the previous fiscal year are carried forward cumulatively into the new fiscal year. Once the fiscal year change take place you can post to the assets using value dates in the new fiscal year. At the same time you can however continue to post in the previous fiscal year if the previous fiscal year has not been closed provided. So the prerequisite to 
go for a change in a fiscal year that is creating a new fiscal year for the next year ahead creation the fiscal year change can only be carried out for the new fiscal year the earliest that you can carry out a fiscal year change in the last month of the old fiscal year so you cannot create a new fiscal year in the mid of the previous fiscal year the new fiscal year can only be created at the last month of the old fiscal year so before you can change to the fiscal year you must have already closed the fiscal year previous to pre previous one because the system does not allow you to have more than two fiscal year open in the asset accounting part so you can have a maximum of two fiscal year open for posting at one time just for an example if we are in a fiscal year 2014 then we can have a fiscal year 2013 as open and 2014 as an open so what we can do is we can post only to these two fiscal year into the system you cannot go and post into the fiscal year 2012 because the system allows you to post to a maximum of two fiscal years so if you proceed from 2014 to 2015 in that case to create a new fiscal year that is 2015 now you would be needing to first close the fiscal year 2013 otherwise the system will not allow you to create the fiscal year so no business transaction can be posted in a new fiscal year before the fiscal year change so if you have not created a fiscal year 2015 in the system the system will not allow you to do any transactions in 2015 and even if you have proceeded in 2015 fiscal year and you have not created the fiscal year the system will even not allow you to post in the previous fiscal year as well and even if you go for any of the asset transactions or executing any of the asset reports the system will ask you to open a next fiscal year for asset accounting so you can continue to post in the old fiscal year even after the fiscal year change but if you have not opened the new fiscal year then the system will not allow to post you even in the last fiscal year as well so the system automatically corrects any values that have already been carried forward and that are affected by the posting in the past so let's execute this particular fiscal year change transaction as an year end activity part just for the knowledge you cannot open it in the mid but you can only open it at the last month of the last fiscal year so moving on to the transaction AJRW So the fiscal year change has to be carried out now over here so you need to take the company code 1010 then you need to take the new fiscal year which you want to open just for now we are uh, till now we are in the fiscal year 2014 and in case I want to open a new fiscal year then I need to go to 2015 over here so as to open a new fiscal and if you want this to be opened in that case first you need to execute this test run so as to check whether the system allows you or not so if it gives you any kind of an error that means we first need to fix those kind of an error in the system so moving up to this execute so yes so you can see now the system reads six data two to change one without value and two already deactivated so you can go to this error log and even if you want you can see the error log as well so the error log is blank that means it will allow you to open the next fiscal year so if you want to go and open the next fiscal year now what you need to do is you need to go to the transaction screen again and now you can take this test run off and then you need to go to execute this in the background so you need to go to execute in background option over here 
and this background you cannot execute it in the front the system will not allow you because of the performance reasons because there are thousands of assets in a particular company code and then that will make your system very slow and not only for your but it will consume all of the RAM of the server and it will make the system slow for all the other users till this particular activity will be executed in the foreground so that is why the SAP doesn't allow you to execute in the background so that the performance doesn't come in between so moving to click on the execute at the background once you click on the background then the system asks you for the printer device and you need to take the LP01 then we need to continue now we'll start time again the same thing we need to go to immediate and then we need to save this screen over here So once you saved, you will see that the message program has been generated over here and once this program has been generated now we can go and we can check this program with the transaction code SM37 enter execute and in that you can see your program is over here the second one is the one which we have executed just now so this is it and if you want to see this you need to select this over here and then you need to go to spool and then again you can select this and you can go to display over here so you can see over here it shows you the fiscal year change over here as a note on the screen the fiscal year change is only a technical step needed in order to carry forward all the assets to the new fiscal year the fiscal year change has nothing to do with the year-end closing for bookkeeping. In order to close the annual values in the asset accounting for a given fiscal year, you are required to carry out year-end closing in the asset accounting before the year-end closing for the general ledger. So you can see the asset accounting year-end closing activity has to be done first then the general ledger accounting part. So over here you can see that the fiscal year change has taken place statistics 2014 so for 2014 six assets have been taken up to the next year so this is this pool which will which shows you all the detail in the system so that is about the fiscal year change moving to the next is undo year end closing now Undo year-end closing is a very rare scenario which happens in any of the organization. However, as a consulting part, we never allow any of the organizations to open a closed fiscal year in the system. But yet, there is an option of opening or uh, a particular closed fiscal year which you have closed earlier. So if you want to open any of the closed fiscal year from the closed part, you need to execute this transaction OAAQ. So if you go for executing this transaction slash n OAAQ again enter you need to take this company code you can see over here for this particular company code 1010 closed fiscal year is 2013. So this shows you that 2013 is already a closed period over here. So if you want to remove this closed period from over here in that case you need to delete it from over here and you need to save it okay so you need to take a pre previous to previous one 2012 enter and now you can move and you can save this so you can see over here now the fiscal year closed has changed earlier it was 2013 but I have now changed the close period that means I have opened the closed period 2013 and I have made this as an open period now but this is something which is which should not be done because it will have a reverse consequence effect on the asset accounting because this period is a standard practice a maximum of two period is two year is allowed a maximum of two fiscal year is allowed in the asset accounting that's why one should always keep its 99% that once the period is closed it should not be opened so this is a part of your 
year end and period end activities so now moving up to the information system now information system is the is something which you can see on your screen over here in the SAP easy access part and this particular information system is a very important tool for various reports which is needed on a day-to-day -day basis so the usage of this is the information system in the asset accounting features a series of reports arranged in a tree structure not only for asset accounting this particular tab over here gives you different reports for all of the sub modules and different different modules of SAP as well in a tree structure since they are launched with predefined variant all of the reports in the standard selection tree have an initial screen that is clearly structured and easy to use these input screens allow you to define various primary selections like if you move on to the screen over here in the S accounting part you will see that financial accounting and over here you can see the fixed asset so in this you will find a number of different reports for asset accounting where you can see each reports have a different part for uh, that's what this we are discussing about that there are various reports in a tree structure so over here the input screen allows you to define various primary selections like you can search the uh, by example by asset number asset class cost centers business area and so on so there are reports for each of these options over here you can see the asset list so you can have the reports over here on the basis of different balance you can see the you can find the asset balances report in the tree format over here on the basis of asset number asset class business area cost centers plant location so there are different options for the reporting perspective in the information system by choosing the all selections push buttons wherever whichever report you you double click or you push on that that particular report will be executed or is started as a standard process so if you want to display the individual assets however you can change this option to choose all selections as well so in case you want an individual assets you can go to the individual asset option over here where there is an asset explorer option and asset explorer is the one which we have already discussed AW01N report by which it gives you the various details related to the assets so by choosing the dynamic selection push buttons in the report selection screen you can use all the fields in the general master records so we'll be we'll be looking after each reports one by one as per the different requirement into the organizations so the report date is, could be in the past or could be in the current fiscal year or even it could be in the future fiscal year as well so there are various reports over here which we have seen just a while back like uh, you can see the balance reports over here different balance reports are available on the basis of different parameters similarly if you move to the next you will find the financial statements over here as well for the asset counts so in the notes to financial statement you will find the asset history sheet as well when you move to the next for explanation for profit and loss account here you can find various reports related to the to the depreciation purposes because all the depreciation and losses go to the profit and loss account so there are various reports related to the depreciation part you can see the total depreciation total depreciation means the ordinary depreciation special depreciation unplanned depreciation altogether if you want to have a separate reports for all the three different depreciation those reports are also available on the screen <coughs> similarly you can move up to have your cost accounting reports over here as well where you can see the reports for the depreciation and interest 
and similarly moving up down you can even have a day-to-day -day reports and even the depreciation forecasting can be seen for the current year as well as the for the previous years as well so if you, even you can move over here to day-to-day -day activities in that you will find various reports related to asset transactions done on a particular day asset acquisitions on a particular day asset retirement on any particular day and even the intra asset transfers too so these are the various reports every kind of a report which is a particular organization or the internal management would be needing in any day can be generated from the system so out of these some of the the reports I have named over here which are very basically used into the industry like AR01 or you can even execute the reports from over here as well like we can see the reports for asset values over here so the asset values report if you execute you need to double click on that and then you need to put the company code over here 1010 and then you need to take the asset class if you want to have the asset class wise report if you want the report for a particular business area you can put the business area or the cost center or plant so as you want the balances those balances will be will report will be reflected to you similarly you can put the date over here for which date you want the report to be generated till and the options over here you can have an individual asset wise report and even if you want you can have the group wise report of assets as well so if you take the list of asset wise report and we execute this report over here we just need to go and execute over here so as you execute the report you can see the company code is there the business area is there then you can see the GL accounts and the asset class is reflecting to you and this is the asset number which has been reflected over here onto the screen the capitalization date is there the date on which the depreciation is calculated on the particular asset and even you can see the description of the asset and the acquisition value at what value the asset was been acquired and the accumulated depreciation and the net book value so this is one of such reports similarly you can you can go for various other reports like there are depreciation current year report related to depreciation so that report can be executed over here so you can see that this is a particular report for depreciation for the current year so if you want to see the depreciation on the current year you can select the list assets and you can execute that particular report so that shows you only the depreciation which has been taken up in the current year so this is the depreciation column and this you can find it over here in the books so one of those common reports which is needed in a day-to-day -day perspective is what is the total amount of acquisitions been done in the current year so if you want to have the report for the asset acquisitions we can move to this report and we can execute that report as well for different acquisition related details so even that can be executed with list assets you need to put the company code even if you want to see the report as per the business area wise or asset class wise you can select those things as well so over here we can select the business area with the selection options so over here you can see there are different assets over here so whichever assets you want to see you can select that suppose I want to have a look at the building asset class so I can select the building and I can execute that report over here so this is the report which has been generated to you there are three assets over here on which the uh, in the particular building part so this is how you can execute the reports even if you go for a different company code like 1000 even in that you can execute the reports over here as well so if you want to execute you can execute for all the different assets and you can execute directly over here so in that particular company code there is no asset data as of now now moving up to the next is with respect to the retirement so if you want to see the retirement up to the particular date for the current year even you can execute that report as well 
So that report says S underscore ALR underscore 8701205 So this is the report over here on your screen. You can see that S underscore ALR underscore 8701205 And you can enter on the screen so you can see the description asset retirement. So if you want to see the details related to the asset retirement for the company code, you can again execute that report over here. So once you execute the report, you can see the output has been reflected to you on the screen. So this is uh, this report has been reflecting to you with a very limited data because we have created a new company code and that there is a very limited amount of data in the system. But as the data quantity will increase, for the company code, the report will become more and more heavier with more and more data in it. So the report can be executed over here while selecting the asset, uh, the company code. Then in case you need the report, the asset history seat as per the different asset class, you can even select the asset class from over here or else you can execute the report without asset class so that it will give you the report for all the asset class in one particular report. Even the business area segregation can be done so this gives you a better option that suppose there are different business areas for different offices or different department or maybe different areas or reasons for the company code. So even if the company want to have the report of uh, the different offices, the assets they have been holding up or different plant they have been holding up. So those plant have been given as a business area name and uh, it becomes easier to identify what are the different assets that particular plant have. So those reports can even be generated from the asset history seat. So it will, it will reduce your time and efforts to prepare those reports to go for physical verifications to the plants and all if those things have been maintained properly in the SAP system. So that is over here. Then moving up to the next now is even you can select this use ALV grid that will display you a better options or it will display you in a better format on the screen. So now we can execute the report over here. So once you move to the execute part, it will be executed. So you can see over here the report. So you can see over here the detail has been reflected to you. This is the asset number. The asset number belongs to the asset class 12,000 which is building. And even it gives you the GL number over here that is 160010. And even further it gives more detail related to the balance sheet items. So this is one of the report. If you move in the similar part, it also gives you the balance business area over here. Similarly, there is a next asset 110000 that is land. And again, if you want to see the details, you can move ahead. So you can see the column over here, the APC fiscal year starts. So there is no opening balances for the asset because we have created a new company. So obviously there will not be any opening balance. But if there is, an, there is a company which is running from multiple years, in those cases you will find this opening balances over here as well. So then similarly you will find the depreciation fiscal year start. So we will also get the depreciation for the, for the start of the year as well. And if you move next you will find over here the acquisitions. So acquisition refers to the acquisitions which has been done during the year. So these are different acquisitions which have been reflected to you in the books which have been done in the current year over here. And then if you move to the next part over here now then depreciation for the year. So these are the depreciation which have been calculated by the system for the current year uh, up to the, uh, the report that has been executed till now. Similarly if you move ahead now next. So even if you don't need certain things you can go on that select and you can even hide that particular column over here as well. So there's an option of hide so I can hide this column as this is a blank column. So now we can move ahead now that the capital date is there. Capitalization date basically. So even if you want you can drag this fields as per your convenience over here as well. So suppose I need this 
capitalization date at the beginning so I can take it over here and I can drag it over here as well as per my convenience even I don't need the serial number even I can hide that particular part so moving up to the next we have taken the opening balance over here this is the opening balance and this is the depreciation opening balances then this is the current year acquisition depreciation for the current year then the next comes up this is the retirement so this is the retirement column if you can check over here this is the retirement column and whatever the depreciation calculated on the retired asset that has also been reflected to you over here on the screen so this fifty thousand dollar of asset have a depreciation of seventy five hundred dollar while the asset was been retired so this gives you the current book value so the current book value is basically uh, this is over here uh, it gives you the values at the end till the date of the report has been executed and even it gives you the asset description over here so again I need the asset description at the beginning so I can take it over here and drag it on the first part over here as well so that it becomes easier to understand so this is your IBM New York building this is your building CA this is your CWIP then this is your building New York so this is the description of the building part now moving ahead next is the next comes up is the transfer transfer basically means the intercompany transfer or transfer of assets within within the company so that if there is any kind of a transfer within the company that will be reflected over here to you and if there is no transfer that will not come on this particular page even the depreciation on the transfer is also been reflected over here so similarly moving ahead these are the different heads you can see and this is the current APC current APC means the net book value and in the last column you will find the accumulated depreciation which goes to the balance sheet part so this is one particular history sheet which gives you all the brief ideas related to the what is the opening balance of the assets what is the acquisitions purchases been done during the year what are the different retirement or what amount of retirement have been done during the year what is the transfer which have took place from one plan to another or one location to another within the company and what is the current APC or the net book value of the assets so this is a very helpful and very important report so that is what we have done with we'll be moving next now uh, another report now there are certain more reports over here the report as per the asset class the report as per the business area as per plant as per location as per cost centers so we'll not be dealing with these all reports because you can execute this report as we have executed this above reports so let's move on to few more reports on the system like we can go for certain more reports from the screen over here and it shows you the suppose we move over here to the asset balances so we can go over here and we can check number of the various reports from in this location that we talked about so if you need the report we can go for executing this report so you can see over here again this format we have executed this a while back or even if you want we can report we can execute further more reports like uh, like the report which I am been just taking up that is s underscore a l r underscore eight seven zero one one nine nine four so this particular report displays the value of all assets in a depreciation area So what this particular report will show you is you can execute the report again over here and this report shows you the same thing which we have checked earlier also that the acquisition values the accumulated depreciation and it gives you the net book value so this report is a simple report which gives you just uh, the current year related details to you via this so the accumulated acquisition value at the beginning has been given over here the accumulated depreciation 
have been given for the current year to you the the plan book value at the end of the reporting year has also been given to you over here on the screen and even if you want you can go to this layout and you can add certain fields to it as well so there are certain fields on the screen but I think this will not uh, do any good to the report so they have been not needed so this is one of that particular report we have executed you can see the report name over here been coming up <coughs> similarly moving up again from the information system you can execute further reports from the system over here so if you want you can go to your individual one we have already executed asset explorer in the last couple of training sessions so now we'll move to the exploring the inventory list so if you need the asset assets inventory number or inventory list or assets as per the different asset class wise or plant wise those reports are also available over here to you similarly you can go to the lease assets so with lease assets you can get the reports related to the lease of the assets with the company even again the country specific reports are over here so there are certain reports related to Russia maybe the Russian reports will not be helpful for the US because of the different legal requirement or legal changes in them moving to the next is the notes to financial statement and over here in the international part you can see the liabilities from the lease agreement then again the asset balances report then the, again there are certain country specific reports are there even there is there is day to day activities which we can run so you want to know what are the what are the different asset transactions took place in a day to day activity you can double click this report over here and this will give you that particular status for the particular day over here so you can execute that report and it will give you those details related to it so this gives you the detail as per the date wise balances so this is how you will be executing different reports in the asset accounting part and the more you explore this particular asset uh, this information system on your screen and you execute more and more report over here going to the accounting part and then in the fixed asset part you will find a lot of reports and at times we even don't know certain things which we could get from these reports which is required to the client so the more you explore these reports over here a list of different reports over here in the folders and it will give you more and more reports to to experiment with to explore with and to know the different reports available in the SAP system so that is all about in this and now the you can do all those things and we'll see you in the next training session so in the next training session we'll be covering a different topic and that will be probably the last topic for asset accounting so we'll see you then take care thank you